Good afternoon. Um, just uh, catching up. Video blog 27. A um, couple of things I wanted to talk about. One was the uh, holding fact checkers to account. Um, and uh, th th this was based on uh, a chap called Rainer Fulmich in uh, Germany who has just served papers uh, against um, fact checkers who are claiming that um, some of the information that uh, he and others are putting out is incorrect and um, accusing them of defamation. Now, when you accuse someone of defamation, uh, it is up to the um, other party to say, to get, present the evidence to say, no, we haven't defamed you. So this is a very um, powerful tool uh, to say, actually, you, you know, if you're going to accuse us of putting out false information, um, Twitter and Facebook and so on are using your statements to um, censor, remove um, items from Facebook and remove them from Twitter, uh, which I think all of us have now seen evidence of that, you know, this is, there's no free speech anymore. It's, uh, everyone is, uh, is, has to be careful what they say, otherwise they're banned, they're stopped. Uh, Facebook removes you or bans you for three days or 30 days from posting. And um, essentially the control is with the state and with the big business. So, um, but part of that process uh, to actually identify this content and presumably uh, these fact checkers get paid for um, for looking at uh, looking at content and assessing it, and then coming back, printing a thing, and then they have some mechanism, I presume, which uh, Facebook and Twitter use to generate it. But they are responsible for their statements, and if they're saying something that somebody is saying something which is false, they're actually defaming that person. So um, it's going to be an interesting to see how. Rainer Fulmich and, and his team uh, get on in Germany. And, and this is something that could be done all over the world, I think, this, this idea that if people are accusing um, some people of, of, of distributing false information, then they should be held up to account, particularly as so much of the information is certainly is, you know, is, it, certainly in my opinion, is accurate. So we'll see how that is. That's, uh, a lot of it is about the PCR test and the flawed nature of this test and the fact that um, there are false positives and the fact that it doesn't pick up COVID and it doesn't tell you whether you're infectious or not. Um, so that's, uh, that's one aspect. The other, the other aspect was um, I've been in a debate with someone about um, what a positive test means if you live in Bristol. Um, and uh, I, I posted um, to say that I thought that essentially given the information I had, which is perhaps that one in 80 uh, people in Bristol um, currently have COVID. Um, that's the figure that's based, that the ONS is giving out. And given that uh, one in 100 uh, of the PCR tests will be uh, false positives, um, this means that if you test, uh, say, 400,000 400, people, then you'll find um, 5,000 people who have COVID out of that population and you'll find um, 4,000 people who have a false positive in that population. So essentially the, the number of false positives would be 4,000 over 4,000 plus 5,000. That, that's the, per the, um, the percentage of uh, false positives out of all the positives. So for, um, that works out at about 44% uh, are false positive um, and the other 56% are true positives and as I say the true positive simply means the presence of the viral RNA it does not mean that they are infectious or that they have COVID so um, it's um, well in my opinion PCR tests are no use unless you're actually using them to diagnose people tests are no use unless you're using them to diagnose individual people uh, it's taught to me in the first year of medical school and it's been something that's a, a mainstay in understanding and uh, this is totally bizarre that you're using tests not only to dictate whether people have to stay in and whether their households have to isolate and all these things it's just
crazy, has no, no value at all. Um, so, uh, and anyway, basically he said, well, on the basis of that, you know, on balance, it's probably is COVID and you should isolate and so on. Um, I said, well, if we just change the figure slightly and instead of one in 80, we make it one in a 101, then that switches the, the thing. So the majority of people then will have false positives compared to true positives. So you'll have sort of 50, 51 percent true um, false positives and only 49 percent will be true positives. So in that situation, you could say, well, let's treat them all as, uh, as, as false. So um, this whole idea of what a test means and then to run your lives based on that is just utterly bizarre, particularly uh, when all the evidence is now pointing to the fact that asymptomatic people do not or rarely pass on uh, the virus. Um, this was actually, I, I found a, a, a video clip of uh, one of the um, World Health Organization doctors um, basically back in June saying it was very rare uh, that asymptomatic cases passed it on. We've since had uh, the, the 10 million uh, follow-up of 10 million people in Wuhan, a huge, huge study looking at it, um, and uh, they, ident they identified those people with uh, who had uh, asymptomatic, cause, uh, asymptomatic COVID, and they then followed all 100 and what, 1,200 close contacts to see if any of them have caught it, and not a single one had. So it was zero of the, those contacts that actually contacted it. So that's a strong evidence based on 10 million people in Wuhan. Um, the other one was the, uh, the brave uh, US Marine trainees who uh, volunteered, some of them volunteered to have a most draconian uh, face mask, um, social distancing regime um, and uh, at the end of this time about 2% of them were positive and as I think only one had had out of 1800 only one had had um, uh, uh, symptomatic COVID then the spread there, there may have been a little bit of spread um, from asymptomatic but it was you know again vanishingly small 2% at maximum so almost all the spread currently and when you talk to, to anybody who's got you know covid who, who, who has um, been in contact with covid and caught it they've known where they've caught it from it's you know my son came back from london he's a registrar at such an you know he, he does this and you know we, we had a meal with them and, and so on you know, nearly everybody that i've talked well certainly everyone i've talked to there may be other people but certainly my experience is that they are all uh, everybody who has uh, caught COVID has caught it from a, a, a symptomatic person. And if, as that, if, if there is contrary evidence, fine, but I know that the government is certainly saying, oh yes, you can catch it from asymptomatic people. Um, but if you, I mean, why don't they just test it out? Let's, let's, let's have Bristol, the whole of Bristol as a trial and just say that we're scrapping test and trace in Bristol. We're going to go two months without it. We're going to see what happens. Uh, within that, that arrangement. Um, if people you know, insist on having tests, then maybe you could allow them to do so. But let's encourage, just essentially say, that anyone has symptoms, stay at home. Uh, if you don't have symptoms, then you can just carry on life as normal. So both of those things, both the idea of uh, holding the fact checkers to account, which would be uh, very welcome, and also the fact that um, asymptomatic people do not pass on COVID as far as, certainly as far as I'm aware. And it's certainly be very unusual. It doesn't usually happen with other viruses and, uh, you know, common colds and so on. You know, people say, you know, oh, Joe had it in the office. He came round and he was, you know, sneezing all over the place. And, you know, in retrospect, that's, that's where people catch it from. So I think there will be, a, a, you know, if there is a change from this, it will be that if you've got symptoms, whether it's you know, coughs, colds, headaches, temperatures, then it may be, it may be a common cold, it may be a, a, a simple respiratory virus, it may be influenza, it might be uh, COVID, it might be any number of um, seasonal respiratory viruses. And we ought to treat them just the same, which is to stay at home if you're, if you're symptomatic. 
So, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. That's my, um, my words of wisdom for today. And uh, sadly, I didn't have my uh, Pilates in the park today, which was a bit sad. Um, Ashling was not available, so um, I'm going to leave it till next week. Um, but um, have a lovely day and see you all soon. Bye.